do you know what's going on with the watch industry? If you do, that's great. Because for me, I don't even have a watch and I don't understand what's going on. But I had to do quite a bit of research and quite a bit of study. And today I have findings for you. Before we get there, let me show you this important chart. What do we see over here? Luxury watch, smart watch and undecided. In many countries, you realize that the light blue bar luxury watch is a top choice if someone had money. Of course, we do know that Apple is now coming with the watch and stuff. Smart watches are really taking over quite a bit of market share and especially in US. But as we can see in many countries, if someone had money, they would buy a luxury watch. Today, this idea of top dividend company for 2022 actually comes from the luxury watch segment. There are actually two listed companies in Singapore and I'm picking one of them for you. So if you're interested, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let me introduce to you this company, The Hourglass. If you've gone by Ion Orchard, you might have seen some of their retail stores. It's even possible that you may have seen a queue going into Rolex or Patek Philippe. But today I'll be explaining this company in three key segments. The first, I'll show you on a macro level what's going on with the watch industry. I'll then show you earnings numbers to help you understand how the Hourglass is actually valued right now. And last but not least, I'll compare Hourglass against Cortina, which is the other listed company in Singapore, as well as Watches of Switzerland, which is a UK listed company. So let's start with the first segment, which is understanding what is going on on a macro level. Let's refer to this article. It's mentioned that the Philips watch auction in Geneva in November last year actually had a staggering $74.5 million sales, almost double the previous record and far exceeding the pre-sales estimate amounts. The appetite for luxury watches have exploded in the last 20 months or so. And in the article, they have also mentioned that fine watches now rank as collectibles and investments on the same level as art or even real estate. Who is this over here? This is JJ Lin, correct? And why is he flexing? His $350,000 watch. JJ Lin is indeed in the wealthy category. If you look at this statement here by Chairman of the Hourglass, you realize that watches are now the single most popular collecting category for 79% of wealthy Singaporean families. This is even above other passion investments such as art and wine, which are tied at 57%. But that's not all. Let's read further. He's also mentioned that year-on-year -year share of purchases by individuals residing in public housing HDB, against private homes have increased by 10%, which means an enlarged base of customers. What that means is a new trend that luxury goods are now viewed as serious collectibles and even a storage of value that the mass market is now catching up on. This is important because when we think of a business addressable market, if luxury high net worth is this segment, but now we can enlarge the total addressable market, that means that sales volume can continue to go up. That means demand will still be strong. Swiss watches used to be known for their precision. When you have a Swiss watch, you know the quartz or something like that, it's so accurate that you won't be off a few seconds even for a year. But nowadays with digital watches and everything being linked to GPS, you realize that precision is no longer needed. We refer simply to our phones. But what can we learn from this article statement? It's mentioned that luxury watches are now a versatile accessory and more value is being placed on form instead of function. This is a marked departure from the Swiss made mechanics that was traditionally what its strength was. Again, form more than function. That's why watches are now like earrings, necklace. It doesn't need to tell you the time anymore. It just needs to look good. That is worth understanding if we are trying to understand the business as an investor, what are the customers thinking of? Because if you think about functionality, then of course the iWatch definitely wins. There's so many more functions that it can give to a user rather than just telling time. That is why watches are now moving towards the luxury segment, if not just the smart watch. Steph Curry has recently given his teammates watches in celebration for an accomplishment he has achieved. And watch manufacturers are now well aware that personalization are what makes watches such an interesting gift. If you give someone a smartwatch, that's fine. But if you give someone a Rolex engraved with their own name, that is seriously a very thoughtful gift. And with that, let's move on to the next segment to understand the earnings of the hourglass. Now, before we get that, I invite you to smash the like button because it's taken our team hours to prepare this presentation for you. 
and hopefully benefit you in your investment journey. You may invest in the hourglass, you may even invest in luxury watch if you are a fan of it. Let's see firstly what is the market share divided into. As you can see in this pie chart, Rolex commands about a quarter of total market share. Omega, Cartel Watches, Longines, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piget all own a sizable portion of that market. All these brands are also carried on the Hourglass. If you check their website, you can see clearly. And the Hourglass has actually slowly transited to online sales with a walk-in collection. That is the direction of where luxury watches are. You order online and then you go down and they explain to you the tradition, the history, as well as the uniqueness of this purchase that you have made. And with that, let's look at the financial numbers. This is a quick snapshot of the Hourglass. What I've circled at the top, which is revenue, is to highlight to you that revenue from 2018 seems to be pretty flat, correct? Previously it was 691 million. Now it's increased to 742 million, but that doesn't seem very interesting. But on the other hand, if you look in terms of profit after tax, you realize that in 2018, it was only about $15 million, But right now, it's past $84 million for financial 2021. This is because the gross margin has increased quite significantly from 24% all the way to 29%. Usually when we see profit increment, we usually expect a big jump in terms of earnings or so. And that's because margins do not inflate that quickly for most industries. So what's exactly going on? That's my biggest question while I was doing investigation into this industry. I realized that this is a very important statement. It mentions that Swiss watch exports have reached a monthly new high in 7 years. There is strong growth for high-end pieces like what I've learned so far. Although total volumes were down, that means one thing. People are willing to spend big on an important and expensive piece. They are no longer interested in the Casio, Baby G, I don't know what else. In the mass market, that is two to $500. That doesn't sell. That has volume, but low margin. People are now looking for collectibles, willing to pay top money. And that's why you see articles like this. Why Rolex sports watches such as Rolex Oyster Perpetual are so hard to find and pre-owned models cost twice as much as new ones. Interesting finding, correct? Let's go back to the financial snapshots. What I can highlight next for you is this portion regarding how much cash they have. Realize that in 2021, they've made a lot of free cash flow, $136 million. And if you exclude the loans, the net cash balance is at least $140 million. That is why when I saw this, I had this intuition. If free cash flow is so strong, this company is very naturally a cash cow. Is going to generate a lot more money. There's no need to open another 10 or 20 more stores. Neither do they need to invest in manufacturing. Which means one thing, this cash power will likely build up. Which also means another thing, the hourglass has the capacity to pay a higher dividend down the years. In 2021, they paid 6 cents. What if they pay a higher amount in 2022? That is my train of thought and if you agree, help me smash on the like button. Now let's move on to the last segment for today, which is a comparison between the Hourglass, Cortina, and this UK listed company called Watches of Switzerland. I'll firstly like to highlight to you the overall trend of luxury watch retailers. You'll see on the far left, that is Watches of Switzerland with the London traded sticker of WOSG. You realize that the net income has jumped significantly, correct? Almost doubling. What about the Hourglass in the middle? They have more than doubled their net income from 2021 to 2022. They've also shown strong results. And it's quite obvious, the easier investment target are those listed in Singapore. If then, let's look at the price earnings chart to determine whether we are getting a good value if we invest today. As of this moment of filming, the hourglass is trading about $1.92. And if we see the 3 year price earnings on the left, you realize that it's trading at about a 3 year high, correct? Even though the correction has brought it down slightly. Cortina is also close to a 3 year high. And on the absolute value, price earnings ratio for the hourglass is slightly lower, 11.22 times. In many ways, the hourglass is the slightly bigger cap company with a bit more liquidity. Price earnings ratio wise, it's also cheaper. That is why for me, it's quite a no brainer to look for the hourglass. But if we look in terms of 3 year history, you might be thinking, maybe it's quite expensive. But when we look for companies, we're always looking in terms of price earnings expansion. That PE growth is actually a good indication that there's strong headwinds for this industry. 
And another important factor to note is the price earnings ratio of watches of Switzerland. It's currently standing at 41 times price earnings. Does that mean that the hourglass can be considered cheap? I think that's my inclination and that's why I have it as the top dividend for 2022. Hopefully this presentation has helped you. Smash on the subscribe button because Hourglass is only releasing its earnings in May 2022. And when it's released, I'll actually share an update on this channel with you. What is mentioned on Watchers of Switzerland is that they've upgraded their 2022 full year outlook with about a 4% increment from the half year mark. I guess that's a good indication that sales is still strong and margins are still fat. With that, I'll sign up from this video. If you haven't seen some of my previous suggestions on quality companies, check out these relevant tutorials. Maybe one of them might help you further and bring you some investment rewards. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.